Hello and welcome to the special coverage from the 12th Auto Expo in the nation's capital. The Auto Expo rolls into town every two years. Lots of anticipation around that and this time in particular the automobile industry is certainly looking to the Expo to revive its fortunes in many ways because yes, we've come through a significant slowdown. It's been more than 18 months of that here in the market. And uh, well, the big change really when you think about the Auto Expo is the venue. The India Expo Mart at Greater Noida, you can look behind me, is a completely different sort of a setting for the Expo. And you know what? That's the part that's been really positively received, not just by all of us who are used to coming to the Auto Expo, but indeed the foreign visitors, some of the managements from the different companies, and don't forget, this is also a center for business. There's lots of deals that perhaps get struck or at least initiated on the sidelines of the main show. But we are here for the cars and bikes, so we'll give you glimpses of that. Besides that, it's also a great time to catch up with some of the senior management at uh, all these various uh, companies that put their wares on display. Somehow, though, over the last few years, we have seen a bit of a change where on the eve of the Expo, a lot of manufacturers already start their activity before they come in here to the actual venue. That's what happened with Tata Motors, which unveiled two concept cars, which are going to be, well, debuting in the market sometime later this year. The Bolt and the Zest were the two cars in question, but it was a lot more on display from Tata Motors and also its group brands, Jaguar and Land Rover. And as always, the one person I look forward to seeing is Mr. Ratan Tata. He is now, of course, no longer the chairman of Tata Motors, but is still an auto enthusiast at heart. Always makes it a point to visit uh, the uh, venues of these global motor shows to see what the brand is doing, to meet with the team, and uh, also perhaps encourage them in a little way. So I was at the stand when he dropped in to see both Tata and JLR. Let's take a look. Tata Motors is one brand that doesn't need a celebrity because, of course, the uh, former chairman, Mr. Ratan Tata, is celebrity enough. What you're seeing right now, of course, is Mr. Tata, the uh, current chairman, Mr. Cyrus Mistry, and uh, also the uh, various executives from Jaguar Land Rover taking a look at the company's latest product range. Uh, Mr. Tata being shown around uh, the new Range Rover right now. Of course, uh, the CEO of uh, Jaguar Land Rover, Mr. Ralph Spath, also accompanying Mr. Tata right through this. Uh, Mr. Tata, remember, is an automobile enthusiast himself, and so even though he isn't uh, the chairman any longer, he makes it a point to attend most of the global motor shows where these brands have a presence, and by these brands I also talk about Tata itself, of course. And uh, remember, it's uh, a big showing at Geneva that Tata Otherwise, the Delhi Motor Show becomes really, really prominent and really important for Tata Motors. We'll, of course, have more updates for you right through the day, right here from the Auto Expo. It's back to you. Now, we're in Hall 12 of the Expo, if you will, and uh, the whole Volkswagen Group family is right behind me. In fact, Skoda all set with its press conference to unveil the updated Yeti and the updated Superb in the Indian market. So that's the action that's about to start behind me. However, since we were talking about Tata Motors and you could see all those gentlemen moving around there with Mr. Tata and Mr. Mistry, but one of them was the CEO of JLR, who has been one of the men responsible for the huge, huge success that you've seen from these two brands. Mr. Ralph Spitt, we spoke with him as well, and uh, he had some very interesting insights, especially when it comes to the growth that JLR sees coming from India. Uh, it's great to see the, uh, the coup here in, in, in the flesh now in India. Uh, what is the uh, immediate focus for you when it comes to the Indian market? Because you've named it your second home market a long time back. Uh, what's going to be the big focus, let's say, in this year for you? Yeah, we are absolutely committed to the Indian market and we are investing more. First of all, we are also now uh, uh, launching today or highlighting today that we will produce our third vehicle now in India. The flagship XJ will be produced in India uh, with immediate effect. So, another step. And in addition, we also want to bring our vehicles closer to the customer. That means at the moment we have 19 dealerships in 17 cities and at the end of the fiscal year we will have 24. So you see we are committed and we continuously uh, strengthen this commitment. Over the last few weeks, well, the last couple of years in particular, we've heard great news coming from both the brands in terms of not just product but also profitability. Uh, this year, do, you, do we see you putting some of that money back into the business. Uh, are you looking at maybe uh, taking a little bit of a hit short term on profitability so that you can build the brands for the future? Uh, we don't take a hit on profitability, but uh, we invest whatever we 
to have available in a further product development. We spend over proportional in the product creation process in order to deliver this very special product to our special customers. There's a couple of areas where I know you're focusing your attention now. Let me start by talking about China. Um, that has been a focus area for some time. It's only going to get bigger perhaps. Uh, when it comes to the Chinese market, in terms of the kind of product range that you currently have, would you say you're well set up to take it further or do you need to look at maybe some other segments as well? Yeah, first of all, you know that we do have a joint venture with a cherry car company and we will produce vehicles in China. That will be a win-win situation for China and Czech Land Rover. And we are investing heavenly and we are delivering all the latest technology to China. Therefore, I guess we are very well set up. But China, on the other hand, uh, is not the only area we are, we are growing. Last year, we grew by 19% on a global basis and nicely spread across all our regions. Even in Europe, where you see a certain recession, we had an opportunity to grow. Is there a sense of pride within uh, the management at Jaguar Land Rover on uh, the, the role you play for Tata Motors, not just in terms of the profits, sure, we've talked about that in the past, but in terms of what it does for Tata Motors on a global scale? I guess, are we proud? I guess uh, we see what we can do, but we also know that without uh, our parent company, Czech Rail Land Rover wouldn't even exist anymore. And I guess on behalf of all the Czech Rail Land Rover team, I only can say thank you very much, because without Ratan and Osiris. Right, so you heard there that it is Mr. Ratan Tata and Cyrus Mystery who both those brands are extremely grateful for, for their support. Now, you saw the Datsun logo. You've got a car here from Datsun, the Go Plus behind me. This is the new brand that's debuting in India. That's the part of the story that gets exciting. This is a new MPV version of the car, which is a multiple utility vehicle. And on the other side, you can see another covered car. So that's the kind of excitement. There's a big buzz because that's a concept that's going to come in to challenge the small entry-level cars in our market. And then you've got this car, which is getting a lot of curiosity from the crowds. As you can see, the Go is the smaller hatch version of that MPV. And uh, this is the car that will debut in our market next month. So there's going to be lots of anticipation on how Datsun prices this car because the players like Maruti and Hyundai and Tata Motors will be watching that really, really closely. We've, of course, had the chance to get into a whole lot of other spaces as well. But remember, the whole idea here is to also talk about the kind of segment where uh, you have a fair amount of competition coming in. You do need to remember that uh, the market has been suffering a bit of a slowdown. And uh, we've had the chance to, of course, also speak with various other managements besides what we've been showing you. So a quick look, take a quick look at this car. And then uh, we want to tell you that uh, one particular company is very worried about this car, Maruti Suzuki. Balakrishnan spoke with the management at Maruti. Mayank Parikh spoke with us just a short while back. Okay, I have with the Chief Operating Officer of Maruti Suzuki with me. Uh, Mayank, first of all, you kicked things off in style here at the Expo. Take us through in terms of the your S-Cross as well as the concept that you've unveiled, what the plans are. Okay, good morning to you. I think, thank you very much. Uh, we have, uh, as market leader, our endeavor is always to define uh, new segments and create new segments. So with this crossover, what we are doing is we are trying to create a new segment of, of cars. Traditionally, what happens, somebody who's having a sedan, uh, somebody who's having a compact car, typically in India, people change car in seven to eight years. So compact car, then they go to sedan. What our study says is that many, many customers do not like to buy sedans. They are looking for options. And one option which we did last year, we created something called Etwi, through Etiga, uh, mini SUV, mini MUV segment, and I think it has done very well. Now this is another thing which we are, we are going to create a segment for crossover. Sure. Any launch plans for the S-Cross? Because a lot of people will be looking forward to this. Yeah, I think uh, I mean, response is doing extremely good and the car really looks cool. And as you can see, this is a production model. So soon enough. Okay, you're not setting a time, plan, time frame for this? Uh, yeah, we'll meet again to give the time frame. Sure. What else is expe uh, expected from the Auto Expo? Because this is where you want to showcase a lot more than just these two cars, right? I think tomorrow we are going to launch a car. This is preview. Tomorrow we are going to launch a car. It's a compact car. And this way we are launching a very unique technology appropriate for India. Now for our crowded road where you have to change gear often, we are launching first time in a compact car, an auto gear shift. Traditionally, AMTs have been available, but they had three problems. They had high price, 
then they had a fuel efficiency was very low and then maintainability was a problem. So we had taken care of all this in the new car called Celerio which we launched today, which will have automatic gears, you no know, clutch, which will have uh, fuel efficiency same as manual transmission and lo and behold it will have maintainability, easy, easy maintenance. So one final question in terms of the overall industry outlook, you know, how are things looking going forward? What's your specific, you know, targets that you want to kind of set for the next financial year? I think uh, as of now, the market is very tough. This year, uh, fiscal, I think, industry will decline by minus six, uh, by six percent. But I hope all that is in the rear view mirror. Front view should be good. And I think uh, we should see a good time soon. Any numbers you want to project for next year in terms of for Maruti itself? Not Maruti, but industry CIM has projected three to five percent. So I stick with that. Sure. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.